SpaceX is about to make a major change with Dragon's reusability like the way they did on Falcon 9's booster. However, unlike the rocket booster, the Dragon usually suffers more stress during launch, due to it must go into orbit around the Earth and splashing down on the ocean after re-entry. This unintentionally makes upgrading Dragon many times more difficult, but it also cannot make SpaceX give up its goal. So, how many times will Dragon be reused? To realize the target, what are the difficulties that they need to overcome? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. On March 3, the Crew-8 mission, the eighth launch of Crew Dragon under NASA's commercial crew program, was lifted off successfully from historic launch complex 39A. Two days after that, or on March 5, SpaceX tweeted, Dragon docked with the space station for the fifth time. The tweet actually fired SpaceX's fans up. So why are they so excited? If you look at the picture carefully, you can easily realize this Dragon is Crew Dragon Endeavor, which is now the flight leader of all Dragon spacecraft, either crew or cargo versions, as well as the world's most traveled crew transport spacecraft. True to its name, Endeavor has become legendary in the U.S. aerospace industry thanks to the tireless efforts of the commercial crew program. It was the first member of the Crew Dragon fleet and also the first private U.S. spacecraft ferrying NASA's astronauts to ISS. Its maiden launch, was on 30 May 2020 under the historical Crew Dragon Demo 2 mission. So far, this ship has spent 466 days in orbit, longer than any spacecraft designed to transport people to and from Earth. It will add about 180 days to its flight log thanks to this mission. What's more, Crew 8 also marks a new milestone for SpaceX, as they have now sent a total of 53 people into orbit on 13 Dragon flights. After re-entry and splashdown off the coast of Florida in late this August, Endeavour could have retired on its fifth flight under NASA's original regulations. But what it has shown throughout the past times changes NASA's mind. Right now, we're certified for five flights on Dragon, and we're looking at extending that life out, said Steve Stitch, NASA's commercial crew program manager, I think the goal would be for SpaceX to say, 15 flights of Dragon. We may not get there in every single system. NASA's human rating certification procedure on a spacecraft or launch vehicle is considered pretty flexible, meaning there is no one particular standard. Certifying spacecraft for multiple flights involves thorough assessments of safety, reliability, and performance. NASA would have likely reviewed data from previous Dragon missions, including cargo and crew flights, to ensure that the spacecraft meets or exceeds the necessary standards for future missions. Certification for multiple flights could also indicate a level of confidence in SpaceX's ability to consistently deliver payloads to destinations such as the ISS or other orbital missions. Therefore, extending the Dragon's lifespan from 5 to 15 missions does not matter if the spacecraft meets the full requirements. Another example is the case of Falcon 9 boosters with an original life expectancy of just 10 launches, but SpaceX has now flown some of its reusable Falcon 9 boosters as many as 19 times and is looking at increasing that number to 40. However, prolonging life for one space vehicle is complicated and challenging, especially in the Dragon's case. Dragon's structural skeleton, composite shells, rocket engines, valves, and other components cannot last too long. After each stressful mission, most of Dragon's parts are reusable except, as far as I know, the heat shield and of course the trunk which was released before re-entry. Some of the reusable parts will slowly fatigue requiring periodic replacement due to the stresses of each launch, re-entry, and splashdown. Along with the extreme temperature swings, the capsule suffers thousands of times in orbit. The four main parachutes, for example, will be washed, checked, and reused because they absorb too much salt after the splashdown. Probably the two drogue parachutes, too, if they were recovered. There may be some parachute bags that are lost. The parachutes may be for three uses, while the capsule should be good for maybe five uses. The heat shield was designed for multiple uses, but when they absorb too much seawater, it's impractical to try to wash it out. Each Draco thruster on the spacecraft is certified for a certain number of firings. Therefore, engineers at SpaceX and NASA are reviewing how much life is left in them. In a recent press conference, Steve Stitch said that some components were already approved for 15 flights. Some, 
we're still in the middle of working on, he added. Some of those components have to go through some requalification to make sure that they can make it out to 15 flights. To requalify a component on a spacecraft, that part must be removed from a flown Dragon spacecraft and put through qualification testing involving extensive testing on the ground. NASA will give the final conclusion on whether Dragon should be certified for additional flights. Of course, that is not the most difficult issue for the company. Instead, the corrosion of valves is always a nightmare for SpaceX technicians. During preparations for the Crew-8 mission, valves inside the spacecraft's propulsion system were replaced after being detected signs of corrosion. They did it to make sure the flow of propellant to the Draco thrusters would not be blocked during Dragon's operation. We've had some valve corrosion in the oxidizer valves, both on the low-pressure side, which is used on orbit, and then the side for aborts, Stitch said. Even when SpaceX was gearing up for the Crew-7 mission, some parts in the valves also needed to be replaced, then reassembled and tested on the capsules. Fortunately, we know all of those valves are functioning just fine, Stitch said. Several types of valves in the oxidizer side of the propulsion system include tank isolation valves, Draco manifold valves, and throttle valves for the Super Draco abort engine. All these were related to corrosion, Stitch said. I would say all of them were done out of an abundance of caution. If the timing starts to look a little unusual, we'll go in and replace those valves, he shared. The valve corrosion is mainly affected by environmental factors. I think it's more how do we keep the environment pristine around the valve and prevent that corrosion, Bill Gerstenmeier, SpaceX's vice president of build and flight reliability said. We may make some design changes on the valves in the future to work on that area. Apparently, it's not just SpaceX facing valve problems. Boeing's Starliner could not conduct its second orbital flight test in 2021 since some issues were detected with 13 propulsion system valves in the spacecraft prior to launch. Inspections revealed a mixture of moisture and nitrogen tetroxide vapor being the main culprit for corrosion in the valves. Nitrogen tetroxide is an oxidizer used to control propulsion on both Starliner and Dragon. We have on the valves an environmental seal that leaks a little bit of vapor across into the dry side of the valve, which is the electrical part that actuates the valve and then forms corrosion on the components inside, combined with a little bit of moisture NASA's manager Steve Stite shared. Boeing's Starliner had to delay its unpiloted test flight by more than nine months due to numerous stuck valves inside the vehicle. Although the problem with the valve system on Dragon is not too serious, SpaceX would need to find a solution to completely fix this problem. This plays an important role in realizing the Dragon's goal of 15 flights. Currently, SpaceX still maintains a fleet of four human-rated Dragon spaceships, plus three Dragons designed for cargo missions after the decision to end the flagship production in 2022. Additionally, the final crew Dragon, the fifth one is on track to be completed later this year for its first flight in early 2025. In SpaceX's view, the fleet of five capsules is enough for Dragon's schedule until the Starship rocket is ready to take over. On May 30, 2020, SpaceX made history when its crew Dragon capsule safely reached the ISS carrying two NASA astronauts. It was the first time a private company put a human into orbit. So far, Crew Dragon is the only United States human-rated orbital transport spacecraft. So it's safe to say that Elon Musk's rocket company dominates this market, especially in the context that Boeing's Starliner has yet to fly despite nearly a decade of development and Sierra Space's futuristic spacecraft, Dream Chaser is only in the initial stages of construction. As usual, SpaceX can utilize this golden period to boost Dragon's production to increase revenue and promote their reputation. However, the company selects a risky step, stop building new vehicles for its Crew Dragon capsule. The plan is to cap the Crew Dragon fleet for carrying humans at four, including Endeavor, Resilience, Endurance, and Freedom, which SpaceX will refly again and again to get crews to space. We are finishing our final capsule, but we still are manufacturing components because we'll be refurbishing SpaceX President Gwen Shotwell confirmed the plan to end Crew Dragon manufacturing. After each flight of a Crew Dragon, the spacecraft must go through a refurbishment process in Florida, where certain hardware is tweaked or swapped out to make the vehicle flight ready again. 
The big driver for this decision might be that SpaceX wants to pour plenty of resources into the development of their next generation rocket, Starship. Well, it's no exaggeration when I say that the Starship project is truly a money-burning game. Begun in 2012, Musk has estimated that the Starship program will cost between $5 billion and $10 billion to develop. In 2023 alone, SpaceX planned to pump some $2 billion into a rocket system in an effort to finally get Starship into orbit for the first time. This investment could be a double-edged sword. In the worst case, or if the project fails, it will affect seriously the company's financial status as SpaceX has been holding many billion-dollar contracts for the missions on Starship. Having to compensate for those contracts is really a nightmare for anyone. On the other hand, imagine that if the Starship program is successful and scaled up, it will radically reduce the price of space travel. The company's Falcon 9 rockets cost around $62 million to carry a payload of around 25,000 kilograms, 55,000 pound of thrust. That is about a sixth of the potential maximum 150 metric ton payload of Starship. Musk estimates that it would cost as little as $10 million per launch within a few years. Of course, the Dragon spacecraft is not the only target in this case. When Starship becomes operational, SpaceX will aim to replace both the Falcon series rocket and Dragon with one Starship. The strategy, putting all your eggs in one basket like this, tends not to be highly estimated in business and investment because it increases risk. Four Dragons should be enough to cover crew flights for the next two to three years, but many people still think that Elon is betting everything on Starship. For that reason, over the next few years, SpaceX must guarantee that each capsule is never allowed to fail. It's never even allowed to be used close enough to its margins that it would need to be retired. To make it possible, in addition to ensuring a reliable manufacturing process, refurbishment work needs to go smoothly. Another challenge is how to maintain a fleet and quickly fix unexpected problems without holding up a busy schedule of astronaut missions. Until now, we have not seen any changes to this plan, whereas the 2024 trips planned for a fleet of Dragon remain as scheduled. SpaceX will send five astronaut missions skyward this year, if all goes according to plan. Crew 8 mission was shifted to no earlier than March 1. Crew 9 is scheduled to lift off in August. Axiom Mission 4 will launch no earlier than October. And in April, SpaceX plans to launch Polaris Dawn, a free-flying mission to LEO that will feature the first-ever spacewalk by a private astronaut. But Shotwell added that SpaceX would retain the capability to build more capsule if a need arises in the future, but contended that fleet management is key. Musk's business model is underpinned by reusable spacecraft, so it was inevitable that the company would stop production at some point. But neither the timing nor the strategy for using his current fleet is known for its entire backlog of tasks. However, that doesn't mean SpaceX's strategy this time is completely risky. As Elon said, it's okay to have your eggs in one basket as long as you control what happens to that basket. Similarly, Mark Twain also said, put all your eggs in one basket and watch that basket. Both suggest that concentration and focus can be beneficial as long as you have control over the outcome. Essentially, Musk is advocating for risk-taking and the idea that putting all your resources into one venture can lead to success if you are actively involved in managing it. By placing all our eggs in a single basket, we can focus all our energy, expertise, and resources on ensuring its success. This singular focus allows for a deeper understanding of the venture at hand, an increased ability to navigate challenges, and the potential for transformative innovation. By challenging the traditional mindset that don't put your eggs in one basket, Elon has demonstrated that his perspective works. Take, for example, the case of Elon's electric vehicle company, Tesla. Over many years, Tesla has remained loyal to making only battery electric cars and a Toyota executive, Bob Carter, has all but sneered at Tesla Motors for putting all its eggs in one basket. Toyota is the world's largest automaker that dominates hybrid vehicle sales, but has been slow to sell all electric vehicles. But let's see the difference here. While sustainable energy is the trend of the new era and the market for fully electric vehicles is growing, this Japanese motor company has been deliberately reluctant on the matter, claiming that many factors have been overlooked in the race toward pure electric cars. As a result, 
A lot of criticism has been directed at Toyota CEO Akio Toyota amid mounting pressure as the auto industry shifts to electric vehicles. Growing pressure from critics and stakeholders forced him to announce his resignation in January 2023, marking the end of his 13-year tenure as chairman of the major automaker, Best of the World. He will be replaced by Koji Sato starting April 1, 2023. In contrast, Tesla, by focusing and bringing compelling mass-market electric cars to market as soon as possible, has quickly become the dominant electric vehicle company in the market. According to the report, 81.61% of all luxury electric vehicles registered nationwide in quarter 2 2023 were Teslas, far ahead of BMW 4.42%, Rivian 3.76%, Mercedes-Benz 3.27%, and Audi 2.52%. That makes sense as SpaceX also dreamt of a similar success for Starship's case. This is entirely possible because thanks to focusing on innovation, the company has gradually been turning Starship into its true Trump card. The proof is that, even though the vehicle is only in the testing phase, it has won important contracts for large national agencies such as NASA and the military. If the Dragon Fleet management is a matter, I'm sure that they have a detailed plan for this because seven years ago at the International Astronautical Congress, Elon Musk mentioned that SpaceX would try to replace all of its current launch vehicles, including Falcon 9 and the larger Falcon Heavy it hopes to launch this year, along with its Dragon transportation capsule with one ship and one booster. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.